Well, I'm sure that some of you guys saw this coming, and I think I even got a few comments on it on my first Kamira video, but today, as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be attempting to run these Kalmira programs, which are again, uh, visual or alternative shells for Windows 3.1. And if you, if you haven't seen both of my Kalmira videos, I have one on the uh, original version of Kalmira, uh, which gives a Windows 95 theme to Windows 3.1, and also Kalmira XP, which gives a Windows XP theme to Windows 3.1. If you want to go ahead and check those out, I'll have a card at the top right of your screen right now. But today we're going to be trying to install these programs in Windows 10. Of course, this is Windows 10 32-bit, which does still support uh, the running of 16-bit applications. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are going to probably ask the question, why on earth would you want to do this? Because there's really no reason to do this, and you would be correct. There's no... Um, real like functionality gain that you're going to get from you know being able to run these programs on windows 10 but that's kind of the whole point of this video just to see if it works uh and that's let's just go ahead and you know jump right into it so what i've got here are three different uh Calmira files what i have is the uh, c33 setup.exe this is the uh, original Calmere, which gives a 95 theme to 3.1. And then over here, I have two executables for the Windows XP version of Calmere. And we have uh, version 3.33 as well, and version 4.0 beta, which gives it the, uh, the actual Luna theme. So this is going to be very interesting to see if we can actually get these to work. Uh, how the Windows 10 and its taskbar and start menu will interact with uh, the Calmira taskbar and start menu. And if you can still launch programs from uh, those menus. So let's just go ahead and without adding any compatibility options or running it as an administrator, of course, I, I, I guess this one because it has the shield is going to ask us to run as an admin. Let's just try to run this. And see what happens so it comes up with the uh, user account control we'll click on yes and let's see what happens this will install Calmira 2 do you wish to continue so this is already working without uh, needing to modify anything so let's go ahead and click on yes and check this out welcome to the Calmira 2 setup wizard so <laughs> This is, this is pretty amazing. I'm actually really excited to see what this is actually going to do. So we'll install it to see Calmira. We'll uh, install to the following start menu group. I think it said program group in Windows 3.1. I'm sure one of you guys will you know, know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure it said program group in Windows 3.1. So let's go ahead and click on install. So getting the thing installed is only half the battle because we are going to have to get the actual executable to run which i don't know if it's going to um but the uh, installer ran which is definitely a good sign so it came up with uh, the readme file here once again calmira 2 shell for microsoft windows 3.1 i want to open the file location of where the Calmira executable is so here we are in the folder here let's go ahead and just try to run it again with no you know modifications or anything so okay so we're already getting problems an application is attempted to directly access the hard disk which cannot be supported this may cause the application to function incorrectly choose close to terminate the application and this is just uh, a message from the 16-bit windows subsystem or again that's a ntvdm of you know virtual dos machine that windows 10 has let's just see if we can ignore this and check that out. We clicked on ignore and Calmira is running. That is pretty insane. Let's, let's go ahead and click on OK. So what it did is it just put, which is what I kind of thought it was going to do, is it just put its taskbar and start menu over the Windows 10 one. So we can still access the Windows 10 start menu and when you click on it, uh, it will kind of go over the Calmira start menu. But let's go ahead and close out of this and Okay, so we're already getting a few, you know, graphical uh, glitches here. For whatever reason, the start menu opens up uh, almost to the very top of the screen. Um, it's kind of in like the middle to the top of the screen. And you can see that the text is white and the background is a whitish gray. So you can't actually read any of the text unless that you, you know, mouse over it. And there's a big change. You actually mouse over stuff. Remember in Windows 3.1 when we launched Calmere, you would have to actually click on... Uh, it, like when you would hover your mouse over one of these menu options, it would not change 
uh, what is highlighted essentially. You would have to actually click on the menu option for it to be highlighted. So this acts more like a regular start menu. Okay, so we have a shortcut to the MS-DOS prompt, which is obviously not going to do anything because there is no DOS prompt on PIF. It's obviously CMD because we're using an NT-based system. So yeah, besides the start menu opening up almost to the top of the screen, can we launch applications? Can we launch the Camera Explorer? We can, and it will actually allow us to browse. Let's actually go and try to launch some programs. Let's go into DOSBox here and launch DOSBox. So yeah, we can launch a DOSBox right from the Calmira Explorer. We can even go to Help About here and check out, you know, the About Box once again. So Calmira Explorer actually works in Windows 10. Now, I am realizing that, and I'm not 100% sure of this, but I believe that this white on white text effect here in the start menu and on this menu bar here may be from the Windows 2.0 control panel changes that I made in my Windows 1.0 applications on Windows 10 video. So if you saw that video, you know what I'm talking about when I went into that control panel and changed some settings around. That may be why that we're getting uh, all of these uh, or all these menus are just on a white text on a grayish white background. So let's see if we can go into the control panel here and you can see that it's actually pulling a few icons. It looks like from the Windows 10 control panel, it does still have the older options. Like obviously all this stuff hasn't changed, but let's go into date and time. And it didn't look like it did anything there. Let's go into, let's go to settings, control panel, uh, sound. Okay, so maybe these links are just broken, which is honestly something that I would expect because it is pointing to the older Windows 3.1 control panel uh, programs. It's not going to obviously point to the Windows 10 ones, but can we go to things like system and actually, oh, so these are all of the Calmira options, I think. Recycle bin, yeah, so all of these are just Calmira options. So these are not actually things from Windows 10. These are just because... Obviously, you know, Camera added desktop icons as well, so it has a desktop properties. So that's definitely really cool. Uh, definitely much easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to have to at least turn on compatibility mode uh, and then maybe, you know, do some like modifications, but this thing just ran right out of the box. Let's see if we can even run programs from the run box. So let's try to run a CMD or not CMD. Okay. So that works like a regular run box, which is really cool as well. Okay, so I just moved the Windows 10 start menu out of the way, but I want to see if we can go to task manager. So yeah, this is definitely a separate task manager. This is like that Windows NT style task manager. And it is definitely like battery. I don't even know what these processes are. So we do have some like hidden uh, processes here that Windows 10 doesn't even show in its uh, task manager here. Like we have uh, the uh, WoW or the Windows on Windows executable here that's hidden. And we've got the battery meter. Like I don't even know what this is because it's not a, can we go ahead and terminate it? Terminating, yes, okay. So, whoa, okay, well that screwed something up. Made everything bold for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know like what that, process was for because this isn't a laptop so it doesn't need to monitor like a battery but yeah so definitely some interesting stuff going on here but there you go calmira 2 you know the regular calmira works in windows 10. one thing that i want to do before that i move on to Cal what what on earth is going on up here what the what is going on okay, okay that was weird um, one thing I want to do is can we go to shut down here and actually, okay, well there we have an interesting effect here where when we move the window around, it like kind of paints over the, let's, let's go ahead and try that again. Yeah, so it, it like tries to do that, that effect where it dims out the screen to, you know, make it, um, you know, darker to, you know, call your attention to this window, but it, it's kind of screwed up because when we uh, move it around, it kind of just does like that. <laughs> you know, when you have like a non-responding application to where you can, you know, drag the window around and kind of paint it on the screen. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about, but it just kind of does that. So can we actually exit Windows from here? Yes, we can. We can actually sign out. That's pretty cool. So 
kind of like uh, in my Windows uh, upgrade video from Windows 1.0 to Windows 10 where I, I went through Windows 7 and was able to go into, into the MS-DOS executive and end my Windows session and it actually worked. Uh, we got the same thing here in Calmira as well. So what I'm going to do is just to avoid any conflict, I'm going to uninstall the Calmira. Actually, it's not even going to show up in here. So I think we're going to go through we'll uninstall Calmira 2 and go ahead and uh, get rid of it. Calmira 2 was successfully removed. Now we're going to try the uh, the Calmira XP version that has the Luna theme. So it's going to be the same set of process. This is pretty much identical. Go ahead and uh, install it. So we are getting a few errors already. An error occurred trying to rename a file in, in the destination directory. Access is denied. Uh, abort. Okay, let's try to... Oh, we probably need to run it as an administrator because we ran the other one as an admin. So that's that's probably what we need to do. Let's go ahead and try that. Yeah, there we go. So that uh, allowed us to install Camera XP. Now we'll go ahead and try to run this. So it comes up with this same error, we'll just choose to ignore it. And there we go, Calmira XP is working. So this is what the taskbar is supposed to look like. If you guys saw my Calmira XP video, you'll know that I wasn't able to get the proper driver working in Windows 3.1. So this is how it actually looks, and like I said, it looks I'd almost identical. There are, well, okay, I didn't want you to do that in Windows 10. Um, it looks almost identical. There are a few minor, small things that are, you know, different. Uh, mainly in the quick launch over here. You've got like these two, you know, border things and the same deal over here. Uh, and same, oh, so it actually displays, yeah, so that still works as well. I don't know if that's accurate. Can we open up uh, Task Manager here to actually see if we're using 90% of our uses? I don't think we are. Yeah, so this isn't accurate. Maybe that's for like the NTVDM program. That could actually be a real possibility. It's the same deal. The start menu actually opens correctly. It does not open up like off-centered up here. So that works. Uh, can we go ahead and launch Calmere Explorer? There we go. So you can see it even has those Windows XP icons here. Um, also, as you may be able to, to, to tell it, it does actually change what uh, menu option that you're hovering over based on the highlighting here. So again, how in Windows 3.1 that didn't happen, it does work in Windows 10 here. Uh, this is, you know, okay, so cool. This is what the about box looks like. I didn't get a chance to look at this in that other video. So, so this definitely looks like, you know, uh, running uh, Winver from Windows XP kind of tries to mimic that theme here. Uh, it's got the author's notes and everything in here, so we'll go ahead and click on OK. Uh, we can probably still launch programs from here. I wouldn't see why not. Uh, let's try to launch uh, RegEdit. Yep, so we can launch programs just as you would expect a you know Windows Explorer clone uh, to work. So if we actually, one thing I'm interested in seeing is if we minimize this, it is going to, because it's all running under the uh, NTVDM, it's just going to, um, well, well, actually, no, it just totally disappeared. So you see we have an interesting effect here. So my computer here and the trash bin, or the uh, recycle bin clone, they open up under the NTVDM process, so it's, it's acting like they're two separate windows running under the same process. But for whatever reason the explorer window will actually it'll minimize up here but you can still like click on it down here on the Camera taskbar and it opens up as if you were uh, clicking on it from up here we can't do the same thing to minimize it but that's pretty cool even when we close uh, okay so it just took a second to update but that's interesting with the Camera explorer because okay so now it shows up down here and when you minimize it just gets rid of it so yeah there are definitely some glitches and a, a few like unintentional bugs I guess but that's just because that we're running a you know software from like literally two decades ago or almost two decades ago on a modern system on Windows 10 which it wasn't designed to do but it actually does it pretty well which is really uh, surprising to me um, you know, Windows just has, you know, with backwards compatibility, Windows just, I mean, with, with some programs, as you guys probably saw from the uh, Windows upgrade video, 
Windows does have some pretty decent backwards uh, uh, compatible capabilities where you're able to run programs from literally like 20 years ago on Windows 10 and they work almost as if you were running them on those older systems. Of course, there are going to be side effects as you have seen uh, from these two programs here, but uh, what okay, what I recommend doing this, I mean, there's really no reason to unless you just want to see what Chimera looked like and you didn't have a virtual machine or you were just kind of bored, I guess. But it is pretty cool that we can actually do this. Uh, we can launch, okay, so I just launched right here. It's going to open up WordPad. So even some of the shortcuts in here, again, if we go into the control panel, all this stuff is, is you know, not, oh, well, wait a second. So that didn't work before. At least I don't even know if I tried the mouse. Can we try printers? Okay, so the mouse one worked, but the printers one did not. Uh, let's try international, didn't work. So at least one of these, uh, like, program icons here, again, that was mouse, will actually open up the modern mouse property. So that's the application name hasn't changed since Windows 3.1, I guess. Like it's still the same name that you still use the same command to access it. So that, that is definitely very, very uh, interesting. But there you have it. That is essentially gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this video, taking a look at uh, running two old versions, or I mean, I guess, you know, Chimera is an old project. So taking a look at this old project, uh, Chimera on the latest version of Windows 10, and it works definitely much better than I thought it was going to. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to also get subscribed down below if you want to see more videos like this in the near future. And also be sure to, to uh, drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on this uh, little experiment here. Did you think that, you know, this was going to work as easily as it did? Or did you think that I was going to have to do, you know, some modifications with the compatibility settings? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.